In the last lecture, we have studied about the formal definition of pushdown automata and we saw how pushdown automata can be formally defined using those seven tuples. Now, in this lecture, we will be seeing how can we graphically denote pushdown automata. So, we'll be studying about the graphical notation of pushdown automata. Now, when we studied about finite state machines in our previous lectures, we have seen that we used transition diagrams to represent our finite state machines. So, they were something like this, where the circles represents the state and the arrow represents the transition from one state to another on getting particular input symbols. So, we shall see how this can be done in case of pushdown automata or how can we graphically denote the pushdown automata using diagrams like this. So, they are represented using diagrams of this form where the circles represents the states and then the arrow represents the transition from one state to another on getting particular input symbols on particular conditions. So, here we have three symbols A, B and then we have an arrow and then C. So, let us see what these symbols mean. So, here the first A that we have, it represents the input symbol. So, this is the input symbol that the pushdown automata gets. So, this is same like the input symbol that we had in our finite state machine. And here, this input symbol, it can also be epsilon. And what do we mean by epsilon? If it is epsilon, that means that that input symbol is an empty symbol. So, this input symbol can also be an empty symbol. And then we have the next symbol which is B. And this B represents the symbol on top of the stack and this symbol is POP. So, when I taught you about pushdown automata in the previous lecture, I told you that in pushdown automata, we always have a stack. And then this symbol B, it represents the element or the symbol which is on the top of the stack. The topmost symbol on the stack is represented by this B. And then this symbol is always popped. And what do I mean by popped? Popped means it is removed. So this is the symbol on top of the stack and this will be removed or popped. And this also can be epsilon sometimes. And what does it mean? Epsilon means the stack is neither red nor popped. So, if you see an epsilon symbol over here, that means that the stack is not red and nothing is popped from the stack. Alright, now let's see the third symbol which is C. Now, this C represents the symbol that is pushed on to the stack. So, the symbol that we have here, this is the symbol that will be pushed on to the stack. And what is mean by pushed? Pushed means it is inserted to the stack. And this also can be epsilon sometimes. And what does it mean? It means that nothing is pushed to the stack. So, in place of this C, if you see an epsilon, that means that nothing is pushed on to the stack. So, these are the meanings of these three symbols that we have in our pushdown automata. Now, let us see an example to make this more clear. So, here we have an example which says, construct a pushdown automata that accepts the language which says 0 power n, 1 power n for all n greater than or equal to 0. So, first let us try to understand what this language actually means. This language means that the number of zeros should exactly be equal to the number of ones. So, if you have n number of zeros, you should also have exactly n number of ones. So, this is what we want to design. Now, let's see how we can design the PDA or push on automata for this. So, first of all, we start off with a starting state which we call Q1. So, just like our finite state machines, this arrow coming from nowhere pointing to a state, it represents the initial state or the starting state. So, here we have Q1 as our initial state. And then, in Q1, we have the transition which says epsilon and then epsilon tends to Z0. So, first let me tell you what this Z0 means. This Z0 is the first element that we are pushing into the stack. Now, let me just draw a stack over here so that this will become clear. So, here I have a stack and then this Z0 will be the first symbol that I will push onto the stack. And why do we do this? This is because I want to know what is the bottommost element of my stack. I want to keep a record that this 
element is the last element of my stack. And why do we do this? This is because sometimes we want to know whether we have reached the end of our stack or not. And how do we know this? We know this by putting an element like this in the stack. And when we see that we have encountered this element, then we understand that we have reached the end of the stack. So this Z0 is just a symbol that we push into the stack in the beginning in order to know that this is the first element or the bottommost element of the stack. In some books, instead of this Z0, they use the dollar symbol. This dollar symbol is used in place of Z0, so don't get confused. Both of these symbols are just used to denote the bottommost element of the stack. So here what we do, we see that we first want to push the element or symbol Z0 to the stack. That is why in the initial state we are not taking any input symbol. We are just taking an empty symbol epsilon. And this epsilon also means, what is this? I already taught you. This epsilon is the symbol that has to be popped from the stack, which is at the topmost. So if you see epsilon here means nothing should be popped from the stack. And this symbol denotes what has to be pushed. So this Z0 is pushed onto the stack. So we have this Z0 over here. So this is the first step you need to do in a push down automata that is to push the element or symbol Z0 in order to know what is the bottommost element. Alright, and then we come here to state Q2. And in Q2 we can get input 0 or input 1. And as we know that we are trying to design a language in which the number of zeros is equal to the number of ones. So let's say that for example we have the string 0011 and as we know that this string should be accepted because we have two number of zeros and two number of ones that follows. So this should be accepted. So let's see. We get this first input symbol 0. So here when you get the first input symbol as 0, what happens is that we don't pop anything from the stack, but what we do, we push this 0 into the stack. So here let me put this 0 or push this 0 into the stack. And now we get the next 0. Now if I get this next 0, what happens? Input is still 0 and nothing should be popped, but that 0 should be pushed onto the stack. So this 0 also I push it or I insert it to the stack. And then we get 1. Now when we get 1, what happens? State Q2 goes to Q3. And when we get input 1, we see that there is a 0 over here. What does that mean? I already taught you. This 0 means this is the topmost symbol on the stack. Check if this is the 0 is the topmost symbol on the stack. Yes, it is. And this symbol should always be popped. So I should remove this 0 from the stack. So here we have removed it from the stack now. That 0 is popped from the stack. And here we have an epsilon. Epsilon here means nothing has to be pushed onto the stack. And then what do we get? We get another one. And when you get another one, now we are in state Q3. And in state Q3, when we get one, what happens? Check if 0 is on the topmost of the stack. Yes, it is. And it has to be popped. So this 0 that we had is popped now. And what is here? It is epsilon. Epsilon means nothing has to be pushed on to the stack. Now we see that that zero is popped and nothing is pushed on to the stack. And now we have reached the end of the string. And here the next symbol is an empty symbol. There is nothing over here. So when we get this empty symbol, we have to check if Z0 is the topmost element on the stack or not. We check here and we see that yes. Now the topmost element of our stack is Z0. So if Z0 is the topmost element of the stack, we don't have to push anything and we reach the final state which is Q4. So since we reach the final state Q4, this string is accepted. So this is how we design a language that accepts the string of this form where the number of zeros is equal to the number of ones. Now there are a few points that you need to know. In case of a pushdown automata, there are two cases when a string will be accepted. The first case is when we reach a final state. And the second case is when we find that the stack is empty. So here in this case, we have reached the final state and we see that Z0 was the final thing that we saw on the stack. And I already told you when we see this, when we see the element over here, we have to always pop it as we were popping these zeros in these cases. 
So this Z0 also has to be popped. So I have popped this Z0 also because it has to be popped according to this rule over here. So we see that our stack is empty and also we have reached the final state. So these are two cases in which a language will be accepted by a pushdown automata if it is either reaching the final state or if the stack is empty. In this example both the cases are true. The string reached the final state and also the stack was found to be empty at the end. And one thing you must have noticed over here is that this is a non-deterministic pushdown automata. Now what do we mean by non-deterministic pushdown automata? I have already taught you about deterministic finite automata and non-deterministic finite automata. In deterministic finite automata every state must have a transition on every input and also it should have only one transition for each input. But in case of a non-deterministic finite automata, a state may or may not have transition on particular inputs and it may also have more than one transition on a particular input. So if you look carefully here, we see that in some states there are no transition for some of the input symbols. So this is actually a non-deterministic pushdown automata. So this was an example just to show you how we graphically denote a pushdown automata or how we make the transition diagram for a pushdown automata. So the main thing that you have to always remember is that the first symbol is the input symbol. The second symbol is the symbol on top of the stack which should be popped and then the third symbol is the symbol that should be pushed onto the stack. And then this Z0 or the dollar symbol is always used to represent the bottom most element of the stack in order to let us understand that when we encounter that we reach the end of the stack. So I hope this example was clear to you. We will be solving more examples in the coming lectures. So thank you for watching this and see you in the next one.